Hello, welcome back to my channel, and today is part two of what would the elves wear if they were real. If you haven't seen the series reveal or part one, click on the eye and it will take you to a playlist. So we are now doing the second layer of our elvish clothing. Here is the drawing I did of this second layer. It has an undershirt and an underskirt, which we would normally call a petticoat. So let's talk a little bit about why I designed them this way and how they're going to work. So first of all, you may be wondering why this is not just one garment, sort of like an underdress. This is because the elves do not always wear skirts. If they were wearing trousers, you still need to be able to wear the undershirt. That's why I designed them separately so that you could just wear the undershirt and not the underskirt if you were wearing trousers. The purpose of these garments is partly for warmth and partly for sanitary reasons. In the modern day, we often need to wash our tops. But if you have an undershirt like this, then you only need to wash the undershirt and not the shirt that you're wearing over top of it. At least not nearly as often. The reasoning is the same with the petticoat, only with the petticoat it also is very helpful for warmth. In particularly cold weather, you can wear multiple petticoats or petticoats of different fibers like wool. Now let's talk about the sleeves you see here on the undershirt. These sleeves are designed so that they can be worn in cold weather or warm weather. They can be left as long sort of arm capes, if you will, if it is quite hot outside, but then they can also be laced closed to become long sleeves in colder weather. And they can be laced up different amounts, so you could lace up the sleeves halfway if you wanted. The undershirt can just be put over the head, but the skirt will have an opening. I think I'm actually gonna put the opening in the front. Because this is an underskirt, it doesn't matter if the opening is beautiful or not, because we're gonna have another skirt going over top of it anyways. For the back of the skirt to close, I'm just going to have a few little ties going down it. This method makes it so that you don't need to have any other hardware, which saves resources. The reason I'm not going to make it lace closed is because that would kind of take a long time to take on and off, and with a petticoat, you want to be able to take it on and off relatively easily so that you can change how many petticoats you have on depending on the temperature it is outside. The construction of the undershirt is relatively simple. It's basically just a rectangle in the front and a rectangle in the back with some small cutouts for the armholes and the neck hole. The construction of the skirt is heavily inspired by the patterns of the Middle Ages. So basically the skirt is made of a few long rectangles with some triangular pieces in between to make it flare out more. So now that you have an idea of how these pieces are sort of going to work, let's get drafting the patterns. As I've said in other videos many a time, it can be incredibly difficult to explain how to draft patterns. I personally just find it incredibly confusing for somebody to try and explain exactly how they draft their pattern pieces, and I find it far easier to just figure it out myself as long as I can get a good look at the pattern pieces and how they fit on the body. I have all the pieces cut out, and now I'm going to show you how they're going to go together. I have four of these long rectangular pieces. So we'll have two on the front and two on the back. And then I have these four triangular pieces, and these will go in between each of the rectangular pieces to make it flare out more. So I hope you can kind of see what's going on there. Because this has a lot of super long seams on it, I don't think I'm going to do felling on the inside because that would take me way too long. Instead, I'm going to do French seams. If you don't know what French seams are, here is a diagram. So I'm just going to get sewing the pieces together. I've sewn together all the panels. It kind of took a million years. It's tricky for me to get an angle where you can see the whole thing really well, but it's got some nice space in it. The shape is really nice, and I have the opening at the sort of slanted part of the panel in the front here. So now I'm just going to attach the waistband. Then we can attach ties for the closure and then hem the bottom. Um, the bottom is like really uneven. All of the triangular panels somehow ended up being way longer than the rest of them, and I don't know how that happened because I'm pretty sure I used the same measurement. But that's a quick fix, so yeah, I am going to go and sew on the waistband. I thought I'd jump in here real quick to tell you about the thread. For the last elvish garments we made, I just used a linen thread because it was really strong, even though it didn't blend in with the fabric. But because with these garments, they'll actually peek out a little bit in a few places and you'll be able to see it, I actually used some white cotton thread for a lot of the parts that are going to be visible. For most of the little ties in the front, I braided some of my linen thread. Then I tied a little knot on the end to keep it from unraveling. Now on to the next day where we had some problems with the waistband where it's like twisting and stuff. It just like has some weird stuff going on. Do you see that? Like it's just not 
laying flat, which is really weird because I actually like, I tore this along the grain. This should be perfectly straight. So I don't really know why that's happening, but I think I'm going to try ironing it and then doing some stitches along this top edge to make it lay flat. But other than that, we've got the ties all done and all I need to do is do the hem, which I can do in my own time because that's not really anything interesting for you to watch. So I'll probably finish all that tonight, but I'm probably not going to start the undershirt until tomorrow because today is my brother's birthday and we have a little bit going on. We're celebrating, so I won't have much time tonight. So I'll get back to you tomorrow when the underskirt is finished and we can start working on the undershirt. All right, so I just cut out the main pieces for the undershirt. However, I have not yet made the sleeves because often like the armhole size changes as you sew them together, as you need to alter things. So I'm gonna make the sleeves later. But as you can see, this is quite a simple shape. I'm going to need to cut out the neck hole quite a bit more, but. So now all we need to do on this is sew the shoulder seams and the side seams that go under the arms, and then we fell the inside. So I'm gonna get going on that. I now have our sleeve pieces. As you can see, I made them have sort of like a pointed leaf shape on the end. This is because when the sleeves are opened, I still want it to like look nice. So I didn't want it to just be like a square end. So I am just going to sew these onto our shirt. Then I'm going to need to hem all the way around both of these sleeves. Then will come probably the longest part of both of these garments. I am going to need to make a bunch of eyelets going around the edge of the sleeves so that they can actually like be closed around my arm. That is going to take me five million years, but I think it's going to be worth it. It will be a very cool, versatile garment, and at the end of the day, it uses much less materials than making a short sleeve and a long sleeve undershirt. So I'm gonna get sewing these onto the shirt and hemming them. I finished hemming the sleeves on the undershirt and I also hemmed the neckline. But before I hemmed the neckline, I tried the shirt on and I trimmed it to make it a little bit lower. I also went and marked along the edges of the sleeves where the eyelets need to be. So now it's time to actually start making the eyelets. I'm going to make the eyelets the traditional way with thread instead of actually little metal eyelets. I'm going to sew them. This is a method that was used all the way up until the 19th century. So to make the little holes that I can stitch around the edges of, I need to sort of make a hole and stretch out a space in the weave of the fabric. So to do that, I'm taking this really thick embroidery needle. I'm gonna poke it into that spot and then just sort of like stretch around a little so that I can make that hole bigger. Now that we've got a little hole right there, I'm actually gonna take this calligraphy pen and try and poke that in there to help make it bigger. I used to do this with scissors. Instead, I just like stick one of the blades in there to make it bigger, but that does not work. Please do not try it because it does make it bigger, but it doesn't make it like a nice circular hole. It basically just like stabs a gash in the fabric. So try and find something tapered so that when you stick it in there, it will slowly be stretched bigger. Now that that hole has been stretched out, I just need to do a buttonhole stitch around the edge of it. So I'm gonna get stitching these eyelets. The following day. This is probably going to take me like a few days to do, which is really difficult because today is Friday and I put my videos out on Monday. And I'm not even finished filming this video, so that's great. So I guess I'm just gonna get moving and start sewing even more of these. It's now almost nine o'clock and I have just finished stitching 88 eyelets on these sleeves. I did not time exactly how long all of this took, but near the end I timed how long it took me to sew just one of these. And I did some calculations and I'm pretty sure that this took me over seven hours at least, not including any of my breaks or anything. So now the only thing I have left to do is I have to sew the hem on the bottom of the shirt, but that should only take me a few minutes and then I'll see you at the reveal.
that is the end of part two of what would the elves wear if they were real. I'm incredibly happy with both these garments and I've been wanting a shirt that has unlaceable, changeable sleeves for a really long time actually. I don't have tons to say about the skirt. I like the silhouette. It's pretty simple, turned out really well, but like, you know, it's not anything super duper interesting, but it is very comfortable and will definitely serve the function that I wanted it to. Now, a few things about the shirt. One thing that I might change if I were to do this again, or I might actually fix soon, is the hem is like a little bit short, so it does come untucked from the skirt's waistband a little bit easily. So I might try and add some sort of extension to make that not happen. A few details that I really like about this shirt is this sort of leaf shape that is on the end of the sleeves. I think it definitely has a very elvish kind of effect and it definitely makes them look really natural when you're wearing them. And of course, the standout thing about this shirt is the lacing up sleeves. There's gonna be so many different outfits and stuff that I can do with this if they're laced up or if they're not laced up or if they're halfway laced up. I think that I am going to do a little bit of embroidery on this at some point, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a separate video on Elvish embroidery where I'll do the embroidering on like all of the different garments. So I believe the next thing that we're gonna be making in part three is the dress. But we're not just gonna stop at the dress. I'm gonna be making a few different outfits. With all historical clothing, there is basically never just like a cookie cutter, this is what was worn always. There's always some variations and different kinds of outfits that you can wear. So I'm going to be making a dress, but I'm also going to be making a shirt and a skirt and a pair of trousers. Plus some bonus garments, I'll probably be making some shoes at some point also, which is definitely going to be a bit of a journey. And at some point I'm also going to be making elvish armor, which I'm very excited about. It's not going to be like metal plated armor or anything like that, because I'm not a blacksmith and I obviously don't have resources for that. But I'll be making some leather armor and probably also some chainmail. Many fun projects in the coming future, but this second layer I am very happy with and I'm super excited to move on to the next ones. Real quick before I finish off the video, I'd like to mention that I have an Etsy shop called Gwen's Vintage Box where I'm selling vintage and antique curated boxes themed after different colors. So the link will be in the description if you want to check that out. I also have this email where you can send me strange vintage and antique fashion photos for me to react to in videos. I actually have yet to get any submissions for this and I really would like to do another one of my Vintage Nerd Reacts videos so I would really appreciate if you would send me some. I could find them myself but I think it would be a lot more fun if you would send them to me. We are super duper close to a thousand subscribers so I really appreciate everyone who has subscribed and has joined me on my weird sewing projects and my nerdy projects and I really hope that you will join me in the rest of this elvish series. That would be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and all that jazz and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! I'm trying to film for a minute here.